stuff that caused this this shift, which which is which is a more fundamental shift than just dumb technical stuff. But um, it's the way those things facilitate it, and the fact that acrylic has a very low brush drag, and uh, that the painting uh, of that paintings of that period that are in the show would be welder. I, I mixed the paint myself from uh, from pigment dispersions, and I had a broader palette of, of uh, organic pigments, which are really high intensity and kind of transparent. And uh, you know, oil paints, you, you have to really fight the paint to make those. To give. First of all, you couldn't get oil paints in those particular pigments at that time. And, and then uh, you know, you have to use so much oil and medium that your paintings would be really slick, and kind of brittle and stuff if you were uh, trying to use oil to do those things. I mean. Let's put it this way, you could do it, but it, it would, you would have to make workarounds to get that to all happen. Whereas with acrylic, because of the little brush drag, it just flowed. So that allowed the longer mark to occur, uh, a shift in scale to a larger scale, which sort of allowed uh, allows you to kind of enter the space, which is not the way I had thought of it before. I was always uh, outside of the painting. The painting was always a contained thing that was in front of me. And uh, when they started getting bigger and the marks started getting broader and longer, then all of a sudden the space could be kind of empty in the painting. And you could sort of feel yourself getting inside of it somehow. And the marks became their own thing. Um, instead of being a means to an end or a purely descriptive form, they started describing themselves, you know, if you will. Uh, and, and to me, that that's always been a kind of a distinction to me. I've, I've never ever really claimed making abstract paintings. And the reason is that when I do an abstract painting, um, it becomes a thing. Uh, the, the abstraction is a thing. It'd be like a, like a, you know, like a, if you're going to make a sculpture of a form. Uh, to me, that's not an abstract sculpture because it's a form. You know, I mean, it's a thing. It, it has weight and mass, and that's why I thought of the marks as having this kind of mass and this agenda. They weren't means to an end. They were the, just the, the stuff in the painting, and equal to the images which I kept sticking in the painting in order to sort of create a foil and create the reading of the marks as the So it took the two things to make that, put that whole kind of set of elements, put them in place spatially. We, we kept the mark, um, take a step sideways, drawing, you know, um, drawn in, in, in the show. It was interesting just to look at you, you know, as a painter, you know, just paintings unto themselves. But drawing has always played a central role in your process. And the transition to acrylic seems to be kind of important for, me, I guess, a merger between the two. Talk a little bit more about drawing, especially since your work, so much of your work hinges on the mark. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I mean, that's probably where um, a lot of the more dramatic abstract elements in my mid-period and later work come from is from the small leaf drawings that I've been doing over the years that are sort of working drawings. I mean, I, I, I uh, um, those of you who haven't seen them, they're, they're like 9 by 12 sheets of paper, kind of yellowish, and I, I did have a simple black ink and brush image. I, I've been doing that for years, and sometimes the, an image that was created there would find its way into a painting, but most usually I would just sort of locate my, my thinking or figure out what's, what might be going to happen if I decide to paint today, what's probably going to come out. You know, sounds strange, but that's sort of the way my process was. And uh, in a few cases, um, I've, I've realized that the drawings are sort of ahead of the paintings. Like the, the drawings are more stripped down language. They, they get away with things that you can't get away with in the painting because you have to describe so much in the painting. Uh, uh, whereas with the drawing, the, it's uh, more poetic in that, you know, the one of those bigger brush marks can have two or three edges and also uh, a sense of uh, form in and of itself. So, so it's a much more of a shorthand medium. And so when I would paint from those, I would usually try to build in with color and, and uh, you know, texture uh, the, the things that, I'm, that I see in the drawing that aren't actually there. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm sort of... Uh, Anyway, when I shifted to acrylics, I could all of a sudden, in a larger scale, do the same marks that I would do in small scale with the ink and brush. And, I mean, this is a kind of a Franz Klein thing, too. I mean, 
Thomas Klein did the same thing by doing ink and brush paintings in the phone book. And, I don't know if he projected them or not, but, but that's how he arrived at those compositions was in a very small scale and then blowing them up big. They weren't the big spontaneous marks they appear to be, um, but they were small spontaneous marks. It's the same with those upstairs. Um, when you see a big dramatic, like in the, he just snapped the thing with all the big red marks in it. Um, you know, those are those came from a drawing, and that, that particular piece, um, I can make it, it's kind of distinct from some of the other work in that it is a, a completely preconceived image where I found the background, I created the drawing, I went through several different iterations until I found the perfect marriage of image and, and uh, background image and drawing image uh, to create this uh, this idea that I was thinking about. Um, and so, um, so I rehearsed those marks a little bit and I mixed up the paint to do what they what it does. Put them down directly and simply like they would have been in the drawing. But I <coughs> excuse me. I couldn't have possibly done that spontaneously. Uh, I wanted they, to to appear spontaneous, they had to be canned. You know? yeah. But that's the same.